What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. And today we are installing PFSense 2.4.4 on a WatchGuard XTM5 appliance. For this task, we are going to need a USB card reader. I got this one from Amazon. A Cisco console cable or you can make your own. And a SATA SSD could be at least 120 gigabytes. Also, a CF memory card, at least one gigabyte. If you're interested in one of these items, they're in the description down below. The first thing we need to do is download the PFSense 2.4 installed serial image from the PFSense website. In this step, make sure you select USB Memstick Installer and select Serial. After the download is complete, it's time to create our bootable CF memory card. For this task, we need to use Rufus. Link in the description down below. Make sure you select the card reader and let's navigate to the serial image file we downloaded and decompressed earlier. And we press OK. All warnings, we press OK and OK. And the process will start creating the bootable CF memory card. Now we can open the appliance by removing all the screws. Please note, if for some case this item is under warranty, warranty is void by opening the unit. Sorry for the lost footage, but here I slided the CF card on the slot and plug in the SATA HD and inserted the console cable to the console port and switched the unit on. We can see here that the BIOS has loaded. Now we can go ahead and open our PuTTY and connect to the watch guard on comp number 8. Uh, the screen pops up and we can see the BIOS and the installer will boot right up. We press enter to accept and enter again and we select install. and. Select, OK, and it will start preparing the disk to install the files. It's pretty straightforward from now on.
We are now removing the CF card just to make sure the installer won't boot up on the next reboot. And we try to connect again using PuTTY. The settings on PuTTY will vary depending on your computer. In my case, I have the settings already saved. See that PFSense has successfully booted. And now we need our adapter settings so we are able to connect to the PFSense web administrator. Make sure you plug in your LAN Ethernet cable to port number one. Default username and password is admin and password is pfsense. We are prompted with the setup wizard and from this point on it's pretty straightforward. We insert the Google DNS server so so pfsense can look up if it has updates. We set up time zone. In my case it's minus four or, or America Santo Domingo. and click next. Here we can leave the configuration as it is DHCP for a one interference. And we click next. Next, we have to reset our main password and for our demo I'm going to use one, two, three, four. And we'll click reload. So PSNs will now reload while we set up on the setup wizard. And we can go ahead and log in. And we are prompted with the main page. Now we're ready to connect our one interference. Just a slight connectivity problem, that's because of my switch. It's not the unit. I'm double checking the settings to make sure I have DHCP chosen on my one interference. On the right hand side, I can see I have an IP address from my internet router.
If you want to help to improve PFSense, you can do so by submitting crash reports like this. It's very important to keep PFSense updated, in this case we'll install the latest update. The unit will reboot. To make sure it does, and it does it correctly, we will open the console window using PuTTY.
After we log in, we can see we are running the latest version of PFSense. Now we are installing OCD Pro package so we can get the front display working and show some stats. After settings are applied, we need to start DLC Pro service. That concludes installing PFSense Firewall on a WatchGuard XDM5 appliance. If you have suggestions for future videos regarding PFSense and WatchGuard appliance, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell for future videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Take care everybody.